Section 2.3 is on deductive reasoning. So when we started this section, I had you guys do a little logic puzzle. Um, and these are good skills to have when you're in geometry. So using logic is very, very important in geometry because we have to do things called proofs. Okay, so I'm going to kind of run you through what we did in class, um, but I'm not going to do all of these examples. So conditional statements can be written in symbols, so symbolic notation, where P represents the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. So in this example, it says, if the Colts have a successful season next year, that's our P, then they might have a chance at another Super Bowl title. That's our Q, okay? And the way that we write it symbolically is we say, if P, then Q, or we write P implies Q, so like a little arrow. So that little arrow is read implies. So if I was writing it out symbolically for the converse, it would be Q implies P, and it would be if the Colts have a chance at another Super Bowl. then they will have a successful, I guess. Sometimes you have to wordsmith it. <laughs> okay, so that would be the converse. So much easier to write things out in symbols, right? So we don't want to have to write everything out. Our hand's going to hurt. So the next one, so it says in order to write the inverse and contrapositive, we need a symbol for negation. So the symbol for negation is this little, like, squiggle. So I don't, I think it's spelled out T-I-L-D-E, so I don't know if it's tilde, tilde, tilde. Um, sometimes you might see a little, kind of like a division sign used, but usually it's the little squiggle. So it says, for example, if we have the statement, if angle A measures 80, then angle A is acute. So we would let angle A measures 80 be our P. Our negation would be not P. Oops, the symbol would be not P. And the negation would be angle A does not measure 80 degrees, okay? And then angle A is acute, that's our Q, okay? And our negation would be um, angle A is not acute. So in symbols, it would look like not Q. So the inverse in symbols would be not P implies not Q. So with that all read, it would be Angle A, or sorry, if angle A does not measure 80 degrees, then angle A is not a Q. The converse would be Q implies P, which would be if angle A is not a Q, then angle A does not measure 80. And the contrapositive would be not Q implies not P, which would be if angle A is not a Q, then angle A does not measure 80 degrees. Oh, wait, did I say that on the last one? I don't know. Converse, <laughs> the converse would be. I think I did that on the last one, but the converse for Q applies P would be angle A. So if angle A is acute, then angle A measures 80, which is false. So remember the inverse and converse are the things that are false, and the contrapositive is true. So that was the one that was a if angle A is not acute, then angle A does not measure 80 degrees. All right, so let's try the next one. So it says, let P be, you come to math help, and Q be, Ms. Mrs. Cox will help you with, ge with geometry. So the contrapositive of P implies Q is not Q implies not P. And what that would be is, if Mrs. Cox does not help you with geometry, then you did not come to math. And then the inverse of um, P implies Q would be uh, not P implies not Q, which is if you do not come to math help, then Mrs. Cox will not help you with geometry. And the reason I said that's probably not true is because I probably would help you, right? I would help you outside of Math help. I'll help you anytime. All right, so deductive reasoning. So um, deductive reasoning is what we call a logical argument. So this is the process of reasoning logically from given statements to make a conclusion. So this is different than what we learned in chapter one, which was inductive reasoning. So that's when we saw a pattern like one, four, seven, ten, and we can say, oh, based on this pattern, 
I'm going to make a guess that the next number is 13, right? So that was inductive reasoning. So number one says, Lauren and Caitlin have the following conversation. So who's reasoning inductively and who is reasoning deductively? So I always think these make them sound funny. So Lauren says, I've noticed previously that every time I kick a ball up, it comes back down. So I guess this next time when I kick the ball up, it will come back down too. Wow, she's super smart, right? Um, so that's going to be inductive reasoning because she's noticing that, you know, when she does something, something always happens. So she's seeing, she's making a guess based on previous patterns. Then Caitlin says, well, that's Newton's law. Everything that goes up must, must come down. So if you kick the ball up, it must come back down. So that's deductive reasoning. So it's um, using logical reasoning. So using like a given definition or a given theorem, in this case, Newton's law, to say, well, that's been proven before. So therefore, this has to be true. All right, so there's two types of de deductive reasonings. The first one is the one we always use. So this is the one we, where we have a statement like P implies Q. And then P happens. Therefore, so this little three dots means therefore, Q has to happen. So my example in class was, I say something like, if there are thunderstorms and there's lightning tonight, then the cross country meet will be canceled. There are thunderstorms and lightning. Therefore, the cross-country meet is canceled. Does that make sense? So if P happens, then the conclusion has to happen. And the law of syllogism is kind of putting two statements together. So it says if P implies Q and Q implies R, therefore P would imply R. So putting it a step further, so I say, you know, if there's lightning, then the cross-country meet will be canceled. If the cross-country meet is canceled, it will be rescheduled for tomorrow. Okay, so if P happens, if there's lightning, then we can go all the way through to the end. We can say, okay, well, therefore, it's going to be rescheduled for tomorrow. Okay. So determine if the statement three follows from one or two by the law of detachment or syllogism. So these can be tricky. So we want to write it out with symbols. So if an angle measures more than 90, then it is not a Q. So P implies Q. Measure of ABC is 120. So that's more than 90, right? So P happened. Therefore, it is not a Q. So this is detachment, and it is valid. <coughs> the next one, P implies Q. If you wear the school colors, then the school feels, or then you have school spirit. If you have school spirit, then the team feels great. So if you wear the school colors, then the team must feel great. This is the syllogism. We say it's kind of silly. It keeps going and going and going. Okay, so the next one, if you eat too much candy, then you will get sick. Rachel got sick. That's the cue. That's the conclusion. So that does not necessarily mean that P had to happen. So we know that P implies Q, but if P doesn't happen, that doesn't mean that Q happened. Okay, so we didn't know what happened for Rachel to get sick. She could have eaten too much candy, or she could just be sick, right? We don't know what's causing her to be sick, so this is invalid. The detachment was always P implies Q, P implies Q, and then the next thing was not Q, but P. Okay. If it is snowing, then the temperature is less than or equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, that's the Q, right? It's not P. So it doesn't necessarily have to be snowing. Okay, just because it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit doesn't mean it's snowing. So this is invalid. Okay. So let's do... Let's skip that. Let's go to 2.4. So it says reasoning with properties from algebra and geometry. So the algebraic properties of equality that you used all the time in algebra are the addition property equality, subtraction, multiplication, division. So whatever you do to one side of the teeter-totter, right, if you add something and add something, you're using the addition property of equality. So these ones were pretty easy for you in class. You liked these. So for every proof in geometry, the very first step is given. So free point on your test right there, given. Because why, are, why did we write down this first step? Because that was the problem that was given to us. We were told to do that. So then our next step might be to maybe subtract 12, subtract 12. When we do, we get 3x equals 8x minus 30. So what did we do to both sides? We kept it equal by subtracting, right? So we write subtraction property of equality. So the properties of equality are always when you do something on both sides of the equation. So a lot of times I'll write prop of and then I'll do like an equal sign. 
All right, so what's our next step? Well, we might subtract 8, subtract 8. So negative 5x equals negative 30. So again, subtraction property of equality. Oops. And then the last step, divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. So we get x equals 6. That was the division property of equality. Okay, so that's our first proof. Got it down. So same idea here. So our first step here, it looks like, would be the distributive property. And we don't write distributive property of equality because it's not something that we're doing on both sides of the equation. Now we just want to combine like terms. We want to combine those. So I usually write simplify for that. So we have 28v minus 36 equals negative 64. So you could also say or combine like terms. Either way, Jeez, I can't spell today. Terms. All right, and then the next step is we're probably going to add 36, add 36. So we're going to have 28z equals negative 28. So that was the addition property of equality. And then our last step is we divide. So that's the division property of equality. Okay, so you'll definitely have one of these types of proofs on your tests. And these ones I think are pretty straightforward for students. The only time that students will get frustrated is when maybe they're doing their homework and they're checking with a friend and maybe they did the addition property, but then our, their friend like subtracted the x values from both sides. So maybe they added 5 to both sides, but their friend you know, subtracted 2x. So they're like, well, what's right? Is it subtraction or is it addition? It doesn't matter what order you go in though sometimes. So your proof could be a little bit different than your 